and if we want to go back, we can. Go ahead. Um, some people question the role of, of women mm -hmm. in both the comedic and Hebrew Israelite tradition. Are there any female leader representatives in either of the communities? Uh, Brother Dabari, Dabari, I want to ask you first, brother. Well, clearly, I would I would say that um, the comedic tradition is one that exists, where um, because of the idea of ma'at, men and women exist in a relationship that is mostly egalitarian in the ancient world and in the modern world. And so, I want you to get the fact that there are many leaders in the comedic community, including my wife. I am the co-chief priest of the shrine of ma'at. She is not under me. We both run the Shrine of Ma'at. You, you've seen other folks that are, are very important in the, um, in the comedic tradition. And uh, someone, even like Queen of Fool, has been on the platform many times. Um, and so I want you to understand that there are many, many... In fact, if you look at the comedic community, you'll see more women than you will men that is focused on the uplift of women. But I'm saying that when you go to gatherings of men in the comedic tradition, you won't see those sorts of numbers. Some question the role of women in both traditions, the comedic tradition and the, um, the Israelite, Israelite tradition. Are there any female leaders, representatives in either of the community? Jabari went, now I'm asking you, are there any female representatives in the Hebrew Israelite community. I've gone to, well, first of all, let's, let's start off with the scriptures. You see women represented in positions of leadership in the scriptures. We know that Deborah was a judge along with Barak. We see that in the book of Judges. So very early in the Bible, you see a woman with a position of leadership in the nation of Israel as far as being a mother figure in Israel. And Deborah judged Israel. However, Barak went to war for Israel. So you do see that in the scriptures. That's something that people really don't bring up because they like to isolate certain verses in the Bible. I get it, I understand, whatever. So you do see that, and I have also seen in certain Knessets within the Israelite community, when I've gone to Israelite summits, I have seen, seen women in positions of authority and leadership within those Knessets and within those, absolutely, I've gone to summits and seen these things. Um, my brother Jabari probably has never been to any of these particular summits or Knessets or congregations or synagogues and actually seen these things, but these things do exist within the Israelite community. I personally have witnessed and seen it myself. So we can't be making broad statements without having all the facts to back it up. When I've gone to Israelite summits, I have seen, seen women in positions of authority and leadership within those Knessets and within those, absolutely, I've gone to summits and seen these things. When I've gone to Israelite summits, I have seen, seen women in positions of authority and leadership within those Knessets and within those, absolutely, I've gone to summits and seen these things. When I've gone to Israelite summits, I have seen, seen women in positions of authority and leadership within those Knessets and within those, absolutely, I've gone to summits and seen <clears throat> Man, oh man. Before we begin, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rechak Wadash. Double unto to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And as always, peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David that are scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. See, this is the thing. If you're not trying to appeal to this world and stand on this truth, this gospel, You're going to answer, you're going to give an answer that the world is not going to accept or agree with. Because this word, you know, this truth, it's not for the world. Neither is it for the weak. And uh, this was disappointing to see Priest Danyala, you know, cave in in the way that you just saw. You know, Jake still have some kind of weak spot when it comes to, you know, this world and our people that are in it. Um, you know, we're supposed to speak, thus saith the gospel, the, the, the scriptures, and don't care who gets offended. Because we're not here to please men, we're here to please 
the most high. Let's go to um Galatians real quick. Now to understand how after all these years of being in this thing, you know, being uh an elder and, and respected, that you just somewhere down the line just become a a fair weather uh Israelite. You know, who don't want to, you know, step on no toes, who don't want to ruffle no feathers. I don't want to offend nobody. I'm going to just keep it all PC. Now, we're supposed to stand on this truth, man. The hell with what people got to say. The hell with people's feelings. Galatians 1 and 10. For do I now persuade men or the most high? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of a Mashiach. And if you here to uh, please men, then uh, ultimately you care for this world. Let's go to 1 John 4. And I'm going to go to the NLT. <clears throat> it is uh first john 4 and 4 says but you belong to the most high my dear children you have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world those people belong to this world so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them and being amalgamated with that Lost in the sauce uh, collective of, of, of men and women over there at the black conscious community. Um, they're of this world. And uh, this is what happens when you become equally yoked with them. And you spend all your time, you know, uh, associating, accompanying yourself with them. You know, reading all these extra books, which is good to know history. And Daniela usually makes good lessons or should I say good videos with um, edifying information on biblical history. But his lane is definitely not to be a prophet at all. Because a, a, a true prophet would have stood on business. But if, if, if he was uh, given that same question. Uh, we Yeah, he, he mentioned uh, Deborah which was a rare occasion. All right, this was, it was, a, it was a rare occasion that the Lord lifted up a woman to put her in that position. Usually, that was never the case. It was never the case and was not always the case. It was very, it was a rare occasion. Why didn't the Lord ever raise up another woman to be a judge in Israel? Before or after that. You had several women that were uh, prophetess. We never said that women couldn't be prophets. You know, women having a, a, a vision or uh, a woman being a wife of a prophet that would make her a prophetess. All right. <clears throat> but um, women were never in a leadership position outside of. Deborah, that was on, that was an exception to the rule, and that was due to the circumstances that was going on in Israel. But see, Daniela used that uh, example, you know, because that's one of the only rare scriptures you can go to, you know, to say that, you know, yeah, there was a, a woman that was put in a leadership position, but um, you don't never read about that anywhere else. Because that was a rare occasion. And it was basically, it was it was shameful at that time. This is a patriarchal book. Okay? Women were not meant to rule anything going back to the beginning when Eve was beguiled. Hence why um, Paul to, the, to, uh, to, the, um, to Timothy in that letter 
that he's, he, he called for the women to, to, to learn in silence with all subjection and not to, to, to speak, not to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be obedient because the woman was deceived and she was in the, in the transgression. So, you know, that, that was a, that wasn't a good look from a uh, preach Danyala. You know, and I and I I once had respect for that man. You know, he used to be fiery. You know, I remember when a uh, uh, priest Bon lawyer, I was in the spiritual realm right now when he was on the scene. You know, it was a different spirit on uh, priest Don Yala. Now, you know, since being amalgamated with uh, the House of Consciousness, you know, it's like he lost his his spark, man. Not not to say that he's you know just completely cold and anything of that nature but you know what he used to be you know he he, he lost his edge so to speak so he just tippy toes and uh he tries to be as pc as uh possible we're not to be ashamed of this gospel man let me get um let me get second timothy was it one Yeah, this is uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It says, and this is in the NLT. It says, for the Most High has not given us a spirit of fear and tim timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. <laughs> All right? So we're not afraid. You know, we're going to speak this truth boldly. You know, given whatever question, as long as it's uh, related to Bible, you know, uh, uh, Bible prophecy, salvation you know our culture we're gonna we're we gonna give it to them you know you know you know we're not ashamed because even when the, the controversial topic of uh you know seizing a woman that's that's unmarried you know it's very controversial and very touchy because jake is very sensitive especially when it comes to the woman the woman in this society has been uh elevated you know, over the men, which that was, that's a prophecy. Jeremiah 31 and 22, the Lord will make a new thing in the earth for woman shall compass a man. So now women are your rulers. We became ma uh, matriarchal and now look what happened to Jake. It did not work out well. So it was a reason why the Lord had the men be the leaders and the rulers. Okay. So, you know, we can't be fearful, man. Okay, we we speak the the scriptures without uh shame cuz we're not trying to please anybody. We don't we don't care for uh positive opinions about us. The Lord said, "Woe woe unto you if men shall speak well of you." You know? We're not trying to uh, appeal to nobody. Because this isn't for everybody. All right. Let me uh, find this script. Yeah, I'll, I'll read this. Uh, Mark 8 and 38, it says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And also the Lord said, Blessed is he that is not offended in me. All right. So <clears throat> we're not going to be politically correct all right we're not gonna um you know hold back because you know you got women listening you know you got uh associates and companions that are 
uh, of a completely different belief system. You know, we're no, nah, we're going to tell it like it is. Or we had one rare occasion where a woman was raised up and used as a vessel to judge Israel at the time. And it was a shameful thing when it when it when it happened, even though it got the job done, you know, because we were being oppressed under the King Jabin of uh, Canaan. And he had a strong captain over his army, uh, Sisera. We was oppressed for uh, 20 years. And so <clears throat> the Lord used a, a woman, you know, Jake was weak. And uh, she was a prophetess and the Lord used her to, to, to lead Israel. All right. And uh, she had an, uh, she had a, a, an, a, a man to assist her. And that would be Barak, which is why when you read Hebrews 11 chapter, you know, talking about the uh, the pioneers of our faith. Um, <clears throat> they didn't even mention uh, Deborah. They mentioned Barak. Because he was the one that went out there and he was afraid, but he still went out there. With, you know, with his uh, manpower and delivered Israel. Why wasn't the woman mentioned there? So, <clears throat> I understand he was trying to appeal to this particular crowd because you're sitting next to a an idolater, you know, which the culture in which he partakes in, they worship women. You know, the queen of uh, heaven worship goes back to ancient Babylon and Egypt. All right, the Hamites, they, they were into woman worship. So that vibration was on them. When Jake gets into it, that vibration gets on them even heavier. So we I, I would we would have been I would, me sitting on that couch, my answer would have been the complete opposite of, of, of what this guy was talking about. I don't know if that was a who was that, Jabari or one of them, one of them guys. All right. I wouldn't even be associated with these with these cats. Be unequally, be not un equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship do uh, righteousness with unrighteousness? You know. What 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 fellowship do the temple of the Lord with Baal? So. <clears throat> Yeah, this this was uh disturbing right here, man. And um matter of fact, because I pulled this up, gotquestions.org, dealing with this uh Deborah subject. And uh, this is what I came across. It says uh Deborah was one of the judges of Israel during a time of oppression. She is called a prophetess and wife of Lipaduff. The Lord spoke through her as she held court under a tree called the palm of Deborah in Ephraim. The Lord also used her to set her people free and defeat the king of Canaan. Deborah's story is found in Judges chapter 4 and 5. Deborah was Israel's only female judge. She was the only female judge. Because usually women are not equipped for that position. You know, women are usually uh, too emotional to make decisions. Not to say that women can't be intelligent or wise, but they just not fit for that position. So this was a very, very rare exception to the rule at the time. It didn't mean that that became a custom because you don't read about this anywhere else. So this should not be an example to promote uh, uh, female leadership in Israel. The only thing women need to be leading is uh, their 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 salvation. All right, and 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 you know leading, you know being a um a good example to their children. <clears throat> All right, like it says in uh, Titus, the aged woman, you know, teaching the younger women to be sober. To be chased, to be uh, keepers at home, to be lovers of their husbands. 
you know, those qualities, being a good wife, a good mother. Not to, uh, you know, sit in a high seat making decisions. It says some scholars have suggested that her position as judge was itself a judgment on the weak willed men of Israel. And it was because that was a rare case. You know, usually that would never happen. You know, why didn't the Lord raise up a woman to sit on the throne to be a, a king? Because that's not that's not a woman's position. The king belongs to the, the, the male, the men. All right. You had a uh, at the liar, you know, she she was committing murder to try to get placed in position. You know. And they end up uh, uh, slaughtering her ass. But outside of that, the Lord ain't never putting no woman that high up. <clears throat> it says, because Israel's men were unfit to judge, the Mosai chose a woman for the job, partly to shame the men who should have taken the leadership. Other commentators believe that Deborah's role as judge was a sign of the Mosai's comforting presence in the midst of his oppressed and downtrodden people. All right. And, he, and you know, she was another vessel. She the Lord can he can use anybody, man, to do his his bidding. No different than when uh, them, them wicked scribes and Pharisees and priests, you know, they were acting like because they were uh, descendants of Abraham. That everything was all good and the Lord was dealing with him. But uh, I think it might have been John the Baptist that told him the Lord can raise up stones. He can raise up rocks to uh, the sons of Abraham. So the Lord can do whatever he wants and he can use whatever vessel, male or uh, woman. But um, as far as the Lord's order is concerned, women were not, it, it was not their position to be leaders. Okay. So. <clears throat> you know. that We got to you know. And this is uh, you know the scriptures say. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You know but. Come on man. Priest Don Yala, Come on bro. Don't cave in to these dudes man. But. We already see what was what's going on because he's been around them for, for years. So he's gotten alchemated, alchemated to, you know, that spirit and vibration that's over there amongst those dudes. And uh, that's why the scriptures say uh, evil communication corrupt good manners. That's why you can't be around, you can't be equally yoked with them. So, you know, we got to keep it true, truthful. That was a that was a shameful time, even though we were delivered. All right. The spirit can get on women to, to, to prophesy, but not in the sense of going out there like we out there on his highways and byways, you know, with their swords out. That's not what went down, man. The Lord is calling uh, soldiers to you men I call Proverbs uh, 8 and 4 he's enlisting men this is uh, the Lord's uh, company this is his uh, army okay you know, we, we have to please the Lord as uh, soldiers and there ain't no women in, in <laughs> the Lord never put no uh, women in the uh, in, in, in our military that's not of our culture Women were keepers at home. The men went out and fought the battles. You know, when we was when we was building, when we was building up uh, the the walls. You know, who was out there blowing the trumpet with with one hand, and 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 and, and uh, you know had the sword in their other hand. You know, who 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 was out there jeopardizing? Building the temple, it was the men. It was no women was a part of that.
So, come on, man. You got to get it together. We don't fold for nobody. We're going to tell the truth. If a woman, hey, according to the law, if, uh, if, if there was a husband who got into a, a, a scuffle or a fight with another man and the other dude is getting the better, uh, he's getting the, the better end of the fight. <laughs> your, your husband is, uh, losing. She's not allowed to, to, uh, join in on that fight. She can't intervene on your behalf. She can't help you. If she grabbed them by the, uh, by the testicles, the nuts, that woman, according to the law, her hand got to be uh, uh, chopped off. So that lets you know in itself. So come on, man. Yeah, let, let's, let's, we got to shoot it straight. Don't be ashamed of the gospel, man. So anyway, with that, you know, Lord willing, y'all were edified. I had to, you know, do a uh, a land back off of this lesson right here, man. You know, we can't uh, have that faltering spirit, man. We we got to, you know, shoot it straight and, and, and be bold, you know, wax bold. Okay, we ain't got we ain't got no shame here, man. All right, we're we going back to, to the old way. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. I'll watch me out shy. And until the next one, shalom.